Hey, let's look at the case if fs has complex poles. Since fs is the polynomial of uh, the, the rational function of a polynomial with the real coefficients, and if the fs has complex poles, these complex poles will always come in uh, the conjugate pairs. So the p, let's see, um, they has a complex pole p. p is a complex pole means a complex number. And this, and they will always always have another pole p conjugate. We use the p asterisk um, and to denote the conjugate. And also, the uh, the uh, uh, residue is a key. Also come in conjugate pairs. So we have a key over. Uh, p and uh, uh, k over uh, s minus p and then we have a k conjugate over s minus p conjugate so this is always coming in pairs and the p is complex means the p is we typically for any practical system this will have the negative real parts and negative alpha plus uh, j omega okay so in this case we're going to have a um, we're going to have a uh, the uh, negative real part and also the imaginary part. The imaginary part in this case, the omega, we, the frequency we, we use as positive number. And although technically there's nothing wrong with negative frequency number, but um, here omega, both omega and alpha would be positive. Omega and alpha would be positive. So let's look at the inverse Laplace. By the way, we can find the residues still using the covering up method, right? So the key is going to be equal S minus P times Fs. And we evaluate that S equal P, right? And it, we don't really need to find the, uh, the conjugate. Once you find the P, find the key, the residue, and the conjugate residue, you just uh, uh, flip the sign of the remainder part, right? Or if in polar form, you keep the same magnitude and put negative sign in the angle or the argument. Okay, so that's for uh, that's for the kind of the introduction of the uh, the uh, complex uh, pole case. So the inverse Laplace transform S F is still whatever the other term you have. The first term you would have k right, times e to p times t and u t. Right, and I'm still using the fact that e to minus alpha t, the Laplace transform of this one here is equal to, or times u t is equal to the uh, uh, the uh, one over s plus alpha. Right, so therefore, if the uh, in this case the alpha is negative p, so you you put the uh, the inverse Laplace term should be negative alpha, which is negative and negative at p. So you get a p t here, you know, in the exponent. Okay, so that's the for the the first term. The second term would be k conjugate, and uh, e to the power of p t p conjugate t times u t. And so these are the terms. By the way, this would be this the. Uh, so the key, this term and this term, they are conjugate to each other as well, right? So if you know the conjugate numbers, if you're not quite sure, and find out the, uh, I think appendix B, we have the, about the conjugate numbers. And what this, if you add a complex number, add its conjugate, what do you get? You get the two times the real parts, right? So. Is, let's see if we can write this in a more recognizable way rather than you have a two complex numbers, right? So let's see, in this case, let's focus on the this, these two terms. So this k times e to pt times ut plus k conjugate uh, e to uh, p conjugate t times ut, that should be equal to since these are the conjugate, that should be two times, two times the real parts. I mean, using re as a, taking the real parts of a e to pt. Oh, I have a k here. I'm sorry. So k, 
k here, k times e to pt. By the way, k is a complex number, e to the power pt also a complex number, right? And so in this case, we'll have uh, two times this. So um, for the multiplication of the complex numbers, it's better, it's easier to, uh, to do in the polar form. So let's see the k is in polar form. So the k is in polar form is just the magnitude times e to j theta. We use theta as an angle k, or theta is the angle k, the residue, and the residue is complex. If it doesn't happen to be real, and in that case, theta would be zero, right? Um, but most likely would be, most commonly k will be uh, complex. Um, so in this case, what we have here is, I'm gonna continue this. So I'm gonna continue you know, with this equation here. So that can be two times the real part of, so the key conjugate, uh, key magnitude times e to uh, j theta times e to the power, I, I substitute this p here. So that's gonna be p gonna minus alpha plus j omega times t. And let's see which one the real numbers. This one is a real number. And this one here, I also can get, I get, I'm need doing two steps in, uh, two step in one step. So here I'm, I factor this, get this out, because this, the, this will not affect the taking the real part. And also this real number, also I have another real number, which is e to minus alpha t, because alpha is real, right? And therefore, e to the uh, e to negative alpha t also real. And now I take the real part of this imaginary part, this complex, this e to j theta plus e to j omega t. And using the Euler identity, what do you get? It, so in this case, based on Euler identity, we have e to j j x is equal cosine x plus sine x, right? You take the real part, j sine x. You take the real part of the cosine x. Cosine x is the things, the, the face angle, which is the, behind the j. So in this case, this would be equal to two times the k times the e2 minus alpha t, and then the, um, then the, uh, the things behind it and j is, they are the major part in the exponent, which is the cosine omega t plus theta, right? So that's what this, these two terms actually will give us this term here, right? And let's look at an example, see if this makes sense. Hopefully it will. And let's see, I have the comp. So this, this example, you you don't necessarily have to use this this method, um, but I'm gonna show you two methods, okay? The first method is we're gonna use the things we just introduced, so we we see how, um, what the complex pose. So um, the FS in this case, I can factor this FS as, uh, so in this case I have S minus, you can write the pose, so this one is fairly simple. So I'm just directly writing the poles here in the factorized uh, form. So plus J uh, three, and that's S plus two um, plus S minus two, S plus two, I'm sorry. S plus two minus J three. Okay. And so, um, the way I yeah you can you can solve these two poles if you want use a quadratic equation for s uh, plus thirteen let it zero and you can solve for uh, these two uh, two equations okay uh, yeah so this first one here uh, let's see I'm gonna so in this case that's gonna be uh, this s so here the p is going to be equal to negative 2 plus j3, okay? So in this case, after this term is s minus p, okay? So I have s, s minus p, yes, so this is s minus p. 
So in this one here, the P conjugate and is equal negative 2 uh, minus J3. So this one here is S minus con P conjugate. So therefore, this one here, K over S minus P and plus K conjugate over S minus P conjugate. And so in this case, the K is going to be equal to Fs times S minus P, right? And then we value that as P. And so therefore, the uh, S minus P will be canceled. We're left with S minus P conjugate in the denominator. Therefore, we have S over S plus 2 plus J3, because that's S minus conjugate. And then we value this S equal the, um, the P, which is negative 2 plus J3. It's a little bit complicated here. But let's see if we can do this. Uh, so then I substitute this into, so I have a negative 2 plus J3, and then I have S, um, S is a negative 2 plus J3 plus, uh, plus 2 plus J3, right? So in this case, what I get, uh, I have a number calculated. Uh, so I got a 6J on the numerator, right? I got a 6J. So I got a negative 2 plus uh, J3 divided by 6J. And what I get uh, in the polar form, that should be square root 3, square root 13 over 6. The face angle is uh, 33.7 degrees. So I calculated the number before. And uh, and in this case, we can get the, uh, we can get the uh, F, FS, right? We can get F. So the inverse Laplace transform of this, we can directly utilize that. So the inverse Laplace transform of FT should be two times, um, two times the magnitude, the magnitude K, right? E2 minus alpha T times, uh, times the uh, cosine omega T plus theta, plus theta. And here we know the omega is three, right? Alpha is two. And so we have two times, and the k magnitude is square root three, uh, square root 13 over six, times e2 minus alpha, which is two, r two t times cosine omega is three t, three, plus three, uh, 30, uh, 33.7 degrees. So this is the, uh, or you can calculate, you can divide this by, uh, so you can, you can uh, uh, cancel that too. So I've got a three here. So this is the, this is the result uh, we got for, um, for the, uh, the inverse Laplace transform. Alternatively, we could get this as Alternatively, we don't have to use this method for this case. Alternatively, and we can write this Fs as, uh, so we have S plus 2 square plus 3 square, right? So we can use that. Um, uh, we can use, so this is alpha, this is omega, and we can use the uh, the, trans, uh, the um, Laplace transform pairs to, to solve this one. So in this case, I have S plus two, and I can write this here, S plus two and a minus two. So I don't change anything. And in this case, I got, um, uh, I got uh, the first one here, S plus two divided by S plus two and plus S three squared. And in this case, this term, I can know the inverse Laplace transform, right? Because the cosine omega t is, the Laplace transform is s over s square. So this corresponds to the cosine omega t also uh, based on the time domain translation property and the s domain translation property. And that will have exponential function there. So in this case, this will be the first term and second term. And that should be uh, minus, right? Should be minus two. And by I wanted the omega there, so I'm gonna uh, so I'm gonna two, so this is a two minus a two times three, so I will also divide it by three. So that in that case I get s square plus s plus two square 
plus uh, 3 square and in this case um, I didn't change anything but I can uh, the this one here uh, alternative I can write in this form so uh, 2 over 3 okay so I didn't change anything because this 3 and 3 can be cancelled but this term I recognize so this is omega over s square uh, plus omega square and we know that the um, Laplace transform inverse of this term is sine omega t right so based on that so therefore f t based on the Laplace transform pairs we got the first term the that should be inverse of f s which is the first term is e2 minus 2t right times cosine cosine omega t which is 3t and minus 2 thirds times sine times e2 minus 2t times sine and I should put a ut here so that's the uh, for the alternative method so this will give you the although this function is two function put a ut here and although these two functions is not are not really it uh, doesn't seem to be the same right so um but this should be identical if you know the trig identities right so let's look at the uh, python code also calculate with the python code i didn't ask you this code yet so this is the uh, do the inverse laplace transform of this one uh, so my tablet is doing very slow now Hope I still can run this. Uh, let's see. No, I'm not running. Let's see. Try it again. Okay, it's running. So let's see the uh, inverse Laplace transform. Let's see if that will work. This video clip is a little bit long, so it probably already took some memory of the tablet. It's getting a little bit slower. Okay. So this is the result, the inverse Laplace transform is just we did. Right. So in this case, give a sine function and a cosine function. So the cosine is the, uh, that's the um, cosine 3t minus 2 thirds. Right. Because there's 3 here divided. So the 3 and 3, 3 be canceled. And this, we have negative 2 over 3. So that's exactly the result we have. Uh, we had. Okay, I'm going to stop here. And until next time. Remember, no matter what you do, you just keep going, right? Never stop.